Hey gang, it's Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to the channel. We're sorry we haven't posted in a few days, gang. My director, producer, editor, and special effects guy actually had all his wisdom teeth pulled three days ago. Jordan thought he was gonna be a tough guy. He showed up back here to the job site the very next day, but after 10 minutes, I said, look man, you're worthless. Just go home, take your meds, and get some rest. But he's back here today, and the good news for me is, he really doesn't wanna talk that much. And we have a super video plan for you. So if you got your cabinets assembled or you bought them from the store pre-assembled, they've been delivered and now you're ready to install them in your kitchen. Now traditionally, you'd run to the store and pick up a bunch of wooden shims just like this. But how many do you really need? You pick them up, you bring them home, and you get ready to install your first cabinet. After 30 minutes, you've got it plumb level and square six different ways. You've got shims sticking out of everywhere and you've already burned a whole pack of shims. And after installing this entire kitchen with this ancient adjustment method, we've been wondering, is there a better way? Now I'm not hating on shims, guys. We use them for everything in our industry, right? Setting doors, setting windows, setting tile. I know there are shims on my F-150 and I'm pretty sure there are shims on the International Space Station. And yes, we use shims to set these kitchen cabinets. Now this is a pretty simple kitchen. The way we were able to get away with it on this kitchen was because of its simplicity, right? This cabinet stands alone. We can access all four corners. Same with the sink base and the same with our peninsula base. We could access all four corners, raise them up, lower them down and get them perfect on our laser line. On this side of the kitchen, the biggest run of cabinets we have, two cabinets, still pretty easy and doable with shims. So we set this cabinet, again, a shim on each of the four corners, got this cabinet, you saw us attach the face frames together, right? Then we were able to put shims on this side and because we don't have toe kicks, we could actually reach underneath and put shims in the bottom. Now this is a pretty simple kitchen, right? That Jordan and I are remodeling, but in a modern kitchen on a new house, sometimes you can have a run of cabinets that are four, five, six cabinets long on one wall. And if you try to shim those, you are absolutely gonna pull your hair out. Now over here in the keeping area, we actually have a run of cabinets that is four boxes long. And it got me thinking, is there a better way? I mean, I could use shims, right? I could take this one, I could shim it up to that line on the wall, get it level here, plumb here and get it set. Then I come to this one on the right, I raise it up, get two shims on the right hand side, fasten the face frame to the panel here, reach underneath, shim it, could do the same thing to this one. And now I'm gonna get to the last cabinet, right? It actually ends up in a corner. Corner cabinets have got to be the worst. We've all been there, right? With a lazy Susan and you're reaching over there, grabbing that back panel, trying to lift it up, put a screw in the wall, and you hope it doesn't sag over time because there's no way you're gonna get a shim back there. So we could burn all our daylight, use two pack of shims, getting all these perfect, or we could show this thing who's boss and do it in less than an hour. And how are we gonna do that? Well, a lot of you commented about the easy level system and we got them. What is easy level? Check it out. Here's one of them right here. It's this housing right here that contains this foot that pivots on this bolt right there. There are no springs inside. It is only those two pieces. This thing is free to move. But let me put it on the counter right here. And I'm gonna put the adjustment rod in it. See it's tapped right there for the adjustment rod. I'm gonna screw this in and, and that thing's gonna pick up because it's pushing the foot down. When I screw the rod in, it's pushing that foot against the counter, raising it up. And when I back it out, it simply lowers under the weight of the cabinet, which I'm duplicating by pushing down on it with my hand. The way the system works is, you've got one in the front and one in the back. And see that elongated hole in the back of the foot? That's this one right here. It allows the back rod to go through the front support and ends up on top of the adjustment screw for the front foot. So you have complete control over your cabinet. You can adjust the back foot here and the front foot here with a Robertson drive. Check it out, right there on the end. Isn't that cool? And how do these attach to the cabinets? Well, pretty strong. They send you a bunch of screws. One thing they ask you when you order is, how thick is the side of your cabinet? Ours is half inch. So they send these screws that won't stick through the side. If you had a three quarter inch side, they'd send you longer screws. So we get three here and two here. Five screws per each bracket, and that's pretty strong. And they've really thought out these screws too. Look how coarse that thread is. So if you have a, like a less expensive particle board cabinet, that's gonna bite in that particle board really well. Now you're all sitting there saying stud pack, those look great, but that also looks like it's kind of expensive. So how much are they? 
Well, it's 1650 per set. This is a set, it's not per pair. They don't sell them in pairs and let's walk over here and we'll show you why. On this run of cabinets, just two cabinets wide. We need one on the right hand end, one on the left hand side, but we only need one in the middle. So why do we only need one in the middle? Well, remember, we're gonna fasten our cabinets together. We're gonna make two cabinets into one cabinet. Check it out down here by the toe kick. If I put an easy leveler on the right cabinet here, it's gonna lift the left one, obviously, because they're connected together, right? They are one. I don't need one on this side on the left and on this side on the right. When I move one, it's gonna move the other. Now you could install such a simple run of cabinets with a $2 pack of shims. But as soon as you start getting into three and four and five boxes all in a row, your frustration level is gonna be off the charts. In fact, today on my calendar, I put buffet cabinet installation with an angry emoji because I knew I was gonna get angry. So thanks to your comments and our new easy level cabinet leveling system, we are gonna take this afternoon, which was reserved for frustration and anger and turn it into cabinet installation bliss. So how do we get started? Well, I actually kind of already did. Now you may have noticed this cabinet is 24 inches deep and this one's 21. It's gonna break up the front. Instead of looking like one long bank of drawers, it's gonna look more like a piece of furniture. But in order for this drawer to clear this face frame, I had to put this little spacer right here. And whenever you buy your cabinets, you always get some extra stock, right? So you can make fillers like that. That piece of filler strip is a quarter inch wide. So the gap that I have between these two cabinets now is half an inch. Here's a half inch piece of plywood and it's gonna go in the back. And it's gonna ensure that these cabinets are parallel. I've got a half inch gap here and I've got a half inch gap there. We're gonna get started by putting all of these on their back and screwing them all together. Let's get our tools and get going. This is called the cabinet walk. <laughs> Point, we did have to drill through our plywood obviously with a pilot hole but we actually extended it through the filler strip so that that screw didn't split it right here all right cool man all those four cabinets are now connected together as one unit and it's time for us to install the easy levels now our cabinet comes with these toe kicks but we choose to leave them off until we trim it out and we're going to talk about that here in a minute but if your cabinets came with toe kicks already on there easy level supplies this little template Got two holes here and a tab on the back. You just put it on your toe kick, slide it all the way to the left until the tab hits the side panel and you mark the hole on the left. And you slide it all the way to the right, the tab is now hitting this panel and you mark the hole on the right. And that hole, that mark you made, is now where you drill a three quarter inch hole that's going to give you access for your two adjustment rods. Easy Level recommends a step drill. In fact, they sell one on their website and it works great in a situation like this. Now we choose not to install our toe kicks until the finished stage. Why is that? Check it out over here. We would end up with this gap here. So we prefer to make one piece all the way across so we don't have this seam. So now that we know all about toe kicks, let's remove ours and install our easy level. going very easy on the drill. I don't want to impact and strip those out. Sweet. That couldn't have been any easier. Now let's do the last four. All right, cool man. That was very easy to install, just a matter of driving all the screws. Now I'm gonna jump out ahead of some comments on this one right here. You notice we put them on opposite sides. That's because we got the wrong size rod. No big deal, adapt and overcome. We put this one on that side and put this one on this side. I can easily reach in with my Robertson driver and tighten that one and adjust it. 
Easy peasy. Now we're gonna stand this thing up and slide it back, but we have to be very careful. Why? Because now we have these screw heads and we have a finished floor. We don't wanna be sliding on that finished floor. We're gonna push it all the way against the wall as close as we can, stand it up and lift it and put it into position. You ready, bud? Let's do it. All right, here's our moment of truth, right? As you can see, we have our line laser set up exactly where we want it. And since this is all one unit now, I think I'm gonna just start with the front middle and it should lift the whole thing up, right? And then I'll work out to my left and my right. Your job site's gonna be different, but I think it's gonna be fine for this cabinet. My goal is to split the laser beam with the face frame. Let's get it done with our Robertson drive and our impact driver. Check that out. All right, let's work my way to the right. I think that's good. All right, let's get this back corner up. I can't imagine doing this with shims. Look how easy that was. I just picked it up an eighth of an inch with a squeeze of the gun. That's awesome. The top adjustment rod is the back. And watch that back come up. Look at that. Let's get the rest done and we'll give you a final overview of the whole thing. All right, for fine tuning, I'm gonna to switch to a hand driver. All right, now let's get the backside adjusted. This is where the system really shines. That was very easy, gang, I gotta tell you. I'm loving this. Dude, that is so easy. Look how we're splitting that laser beam. You could never do that with shims, or it'd take you an hour. All right, check it out, gang. That is unbelievable. That took less than five minutes to perfectly adjust these cabinets. Now, our line laser, that laser beam, is less than an eighth of an inch thick, and we are splitting it in half with the face frame and the back panel. Incredible. And the fine adjust with the Robertson screwdriver is the way to go at the end. Now, a couple things about this system. Number one, we're not sure that this cabinet goes exactly right here on this wall. My wife's gonna to come tomorrow and she's gonna make us move it, I'm sure. Maybe a quarter inch this way, three sixteenths that way, you know the whole drill. But here's what's gonna happen. Our easy levels are gonna move with the cabinet. If these were on wooden shims, it's gonna fall off and all our work was for naught. Now here's another thing. These cabinets are basically on metal feet. What happens if we have a little minor flood? I mean, this kitchen's not gonna flood, right? But what happens? Our cabinets aren't gonna soak up any water because they're on metal feet. I'm just saying it's kind of a cool thing not to be on wooden shims anymore. So the last thing we have to do for this cabinet installed, Jordan, is gonna be tomorrow when mom shows up and she moves it in the final position. So make sure you bring your loincloth. We're gonna have to go back and use the old shim method put a shim back here and screw this to the wall. I don't want to wear my loincloth in front of mom. <laughs> That's true. Well, cause we know this is straight, right? We assembled it on the floor and our wall is not. So we're going to put a shim here, some screws into our studs and we'll be good to go. So what do we think about the easy level system and is it worth it? So let's talk time. How much time did this take us? Or on the flip side, how much time did we save by using easy level? It took Jordan and I about 10 minutes to put these on the floor and screw them together as one complete unit. It took us about another 10 minutes to put the five sets of easy levelers on the bottom. Once we had it flipped up, in less than five minutes, guys, we were dialed into our laser beam. My anxiety level, you know what? I didn't even have any anxiety. I was having fun. When's the last time you had fun installing cabinets? So yes, the easy levelers are more expensive than the shims. But you know what I see when I see a pack of shims? I see anxiety and frustration. In fact, I don't even want to hold those anymore. Because here's what happens, right? You get all your shims lined up on the top, on the side, on the bottom. You stand up to get your drill, you knock your cabinet, and all your shims fall, right? We've all been there. So I'm all aboard the easy level train now. I'm a huge fan. It's a great product. And we purchased all these guys. They weren't sent to us or anything like that. 
and we got half our day back. In fact, we got to spend the rest of the half of our day working on another angry emoji on my calendar. And what was that? I got to scribe this crown to some existing crown that was a different profile. If you wanna have fun, get one piece of crown, a separate piece of crown, two different profiles, make them come together in a corner, you're gonna have a blast. All right, gang, check it out. Yes, we spent some money on the easy level system, but in the end, look at all the time and frustration it saved us. And in this construction industry, time is money, right? That's what you always tell me in the comments. And what kind of price can you put on the frustration you save yourself? So pick up some easy levels, try them on your like button, get it perfectly the way you want it, smash it for us, ask us a question, drop us a comment, give us your own cabinet installation nightmare story, Subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you on our next video.